India continues to be a key global agricultural producer, irrespective of the declining share of agriculture in the economy. The whole country remains prone to environmental degradation and weather-related disaster risk. Keeping this in mind, Vishweva Kendra, in collaboration with Gramyam Tamil Nadu, is striving to implement adaptation strategies to mitigate the impact of environment and sustain agriculture productivity. In this webinar, we will be talking about two very important aspects of our of our planet Earth, which I say is environment and agriculture. I think they go hand in hand. Uh, extremely you know they work in coalition you know and i think india being an agrarian economy you know 60 i think that is what we used to learn in the school 60% of the economy is dependent on agriculture and agriculture in itself is i think related to environment so i think we cannot move that we i think we cannot move them apart i think it's like a husband and wife i think if we move them apart there is going to be a lot of problem so i think it is very important that we keep our environment and keep our agricultural agricultural uh, ways innovations to the point you know, and we keep them and we keep evolving and evolving as well uh, when we say when we we would be talking about the existing environmental challenges that are there but uh, i think we have a resource persons who will be focusing on the challenges uh and of the environment you know existing environmental challenges due to covid-19 plus we would be talking about eco friendly agriculture you know uh keeping in mind how the environment and agriculture can coexist together in the last 74 years agriculture is one sector that which has really supported the indian economy the society yet we find that our country is very proud because we had the green revolution the white revolution the blue revolution and uh, agriculture is rightly the backbone of our country today also there are a lot of programs by niti aayog and almost all sectors for promoting agriculture it is time that in the times of covid we reinvent agriculture we all know that agriculture that is practiced today called the industrial agriculture has its own problem of over fertilization the burden of over fertilization and other ecological ramifications like uh, the pest problems and uh, overdose of fertilizers in the soil etc the question today is how do we really build the ecological fabric into the agricultural system so that it doesn't really um, start uh, misusing the environment and overusing the environment so what we really want is a regenerative agriculture and succession agriculture and that is where in 2003 people did talk about eco agriculture can that come into the being because eco agriculture you all know is a blend of all fields of forestry agriculture fisheries water security all that put together in a landscape now these are all important issues just to tell some of you that uh, biodiversity itself needs a better understanding the definition of biodiversity is that it is the variation that exists within the populations which is the genetic variations it can also be the species variation with difference between two species and also the ecosystem variations this variation and variability is very very important for the development of a country and fortunately india is blessed let us also know that we have not really understood our forest so well the, the wealth within the forest are not really so well understood because every day we are unraveling mysteries of forest and new species are being unearthed and um, new species are being found out if our uh, export of medicinal plants and our med medicinal plant trade today it's it is something like 60000 crores so all that is within the forest and that is how we have the biodiversity act that has come into play in 2002 we also know that today's the drugs are mostly plant based with the 74% of the uh, plant supporting drugs and then we have the fungi 18% vertebrates 3% and 80% of our medicinal plant is all uh, uh, plant based our medicinal medicines are plant based and we also know that 80 per 90% of the collection is white so to a large extent our our uh, flora is under threat but today with the unsustainable practices we are losing the so called species that we have that are very important for the dynamic ecosystems to ex exist today during the covid one sector that is found to be doing very well 
uh, normally well is the agriculture sector because it is not unlike the other sectors which probably the lockdown has affected this sector has not suffered so much but at the same time this year is called the year of biodiversity the world environment day said that we all should start celebrating biodiversity and what is really important is that people should start believing in nature based solutions today you also know that we have uh, the 17 uh, goals the un 17 goals on sustainable development goals and most of the goals are centered around um, biodiversity forests and sustainable living for these things it becomes very important that when you talk of no hunger one or when you talk of no poverty uh, of sustainable goal, all this requires strong biodiversity backing. Similarly, goal number 12 on sustainable consumption and production, goal number 13, climate change action, goal number 14 on uh, ocean life, and goal number 15 on life above land. All this calls for uh, prudent actions on forests and uh, um, how do we really conserve them and protect them. What will happen to the so-called um, wildlife within the forest, the biodiversity within the forest? We know right away that 75% of the land is under uh, stages of degradation. 40% of the oceans are under stages of degradation. We also know that 50% of the rivers are under threat. Many of the rivers that we talk of, we have, there are reports of 446 rivers in the country stretching two, two, kilo, two lakh kilometers. And all these rivers, I can tell you at least some of the rivers that we know are under really dangerous situations because the either sides of the rivers have been uh, uh, industrialized and a lot of changes have taken place. The vegetation is all going. So what is really today lacking is the loss of pollinators is a very, very serious issue. And uh, we also find pollution another very serious issue. I think collectively all of us uh, today stand responsible and the challenges that are going to come because with the unemployment, with 50% of our mass being youth, we have to probably ensure that they understand biodiversity better, they understand agriculture better. Thanks today, many of the agri engineers are coming, coming from uh, the engineering field are taking up agriculture. So there is a lot of reverse uh, thought process going on to promoting agriculture. So first I will go on uh, community mobilization and institution building. Uh, we form, uh, because women are also equal part in agriculture sector, almost 72% uh, of agriculture operations are being carried out women for. So we are also focusing more on the uh, formation of women self-help groups to empower them and to make them in uh, all the decision making process. Uh, we also form village development committee because it's also a very good uh, institution under which various uh, decisions are making because they are involved in all the planning process the villagers are involved in uh, implementation and they are also involved in management of the project once we hand it over to the uh, local community uh, now i focus on integrated water resources development under which uh, initially we went in our village with the ideas of our engineering uh, brains like let us construct check dams to conserve water the villagers outrightly rejected this idea in Vardha program here in Maharashtra and they said that we don't want your check dams. Our small streams and rivers have been filtered upon, so we need to do re uh, river rejuvenation, deepening and widening and desiltation of these rivers so that they can they, we can form them in their, in their original forms. After completion of uh, river rejuvenation, we also build check dams wherever sites are feasible and uh, it is basically a gated structure. Then we also create percolation tanks, ponds, as per the need and uh, suitability of the sites. Uh, uh, we also create farm ponds, and farm ponds are very useful. Uh, we are now farmers are converting uh, farm ponds into um, wells, so they are also uh, converting the rainfed farming under uh, irrigation. Uh, this is a very unique uh, and innovative uh, water harvesting structure called, called Bori Band. You can see the uh, cement bag, empty cement bag, filled up with the locally available uh, soil or sand and stack across the river bed. This is basically seasonal structure. It costs is around 5,000, 6,000 per structure. And farmers themselves are uh, coming forward to install these bags so that labor cost is not there. This is also very unique and very innovative model of uh, rainwater harvesting structure. It's called the uh, uh, rainwater uh, uh, well recharging through rainwater because we have millions and millions of wells. Rainwater is diverted from the farm to these wells through sort of uh, uh, recharge mechanism under which uh, some pipes are installed so that uh, 
entire rainwater which falls on the farms is diverted into wells. One season we have observed that uh, 380 feet more wells were dried and in one season 360 feet water table has increased. Uh, this is also a very unique uh, water harvesting structure we are implementing in our Rajasthan area where uh, uh, they usually construct bore wells. Uh, wells. Open wells are not there now because of the almost 300 to 400 feet uh, bore wells are there. So this is also picking up very well now. Uh, it is also becoming very popular among the farming community. We also promote uh, for efficient use of uh, available water. We also promote micro irrigation system like uh, drip irrigation and sprinkler irrigation. And uh, we are also uh, trying to emphasize more on shifting of cropping pattern from uh, traditional to demand driven crops. Like, like uh, in the Vardai part of Vidar region where it is predominantly uh, a cotton crop is there. So now we are shifting uh, cropping pattern from traditional to demand driven. We are promoting horticulture, we are promoting wadi project. Then uh, we are promoting a natural farming, not organic. Natural farming is basically uh, indigenous cow based and locally available biomass based uh, uh, natural farming because there is no external input cost as such. Uh, we are also promoting climate proofing projects in uh, collaboration with Nabar. A self reliant farming. If farmers are self reliant, then the village will be self reliant. And if village is self reliant, our nation will be self reliant. Then individually, farmers are very weak. They are not able to sell their product even in neighboring village, but collectively they are very strong. So we are promoting uh, agribusiness through promotion of uh, farmers' products and organization in collaboration with NABAD. And we have formed almost uh, 18 farmers' producer companies under which they have started their own processing units, they have started their own grading units, packaging plants, policies, and cereals, etc. Collectively, they come together to sell their product, products in the market and to collectively purchase whatever inputs are required in, in agriculture. You can see some of the photographs wherein uh, the small producer agro resource centers, farmers have started to our FPOs. Uh, we also had other need-based intervention like biogas we are promoting because you see, those who have their own caterers, they can easily build biogas. <laughs>
appropriate mechanical cultivation, uh, mineral bearing rocks like rock phosphate, all these things have to be used. Even in fact, biochar, biochar is a very good uh, method to improve the soil fertility and productivity. And also waste decomposer, we all know that a waste decomposer developed by NCOF is uh, very effective in uh, promoting this uh, concept. So when we see the basic elements, it is the input optimization. So when we want to increase our productivity, when we go for higher use of fertilizers, water, things like that, like chemical pesticide, it is not sustainable because they are all depend on fossil fuel and groundwater is also a depleting resource. Diversification, this is very, very important. People go for few crops. For example, if you take tomato, everybody will go for tomato, the price falls and the farmers are unable to get even the harvesting cost. So we have to go for drivers, cropping and livestock systems. Diversification lead to more stable farm income by lowering economic risk. So this also will help the farmer to buffer during whenever there is a decline in a particular commodity price. And also value addition. Value addition has to be done. See, because farm produce have a very short life, people don't get the price. Conserve and create a healthy soil. So stop soil erosion by terracing, strip cropping, so repairing gullies. So at the panchayat level, it has to be done. And coming to the soil, uh, we have to properly test and use the organic menus, compost, whatever litters, leaf litters, particularly in forest areas, surrounding areas, they have to use the leaf litters. And weed composting is one interesting thing. During the monsoon, we see a lot of weeds all over our area, near to the roads and all. So all these weeds can be easily composted with the cow dung slurry as well as waste decomposer. So also use of chemicals, we have to be very, very cautious. We should not use the red labeled chemicals. We have to go for green label. And only when it is absolutely necessary and use the least toxic, we also should recycle properly the containers and dispose as per the label instructions. So conserve energy resources. So this is very, very important. Now the tillage operations uh, in our own district, one farmer uh, who is a disciple of uh, the great Namalwar. Many people know the organic scientist, Dr. Namalwar. Uh, he has his farm in uh, Vanagam in Karur district, Kadavur block. So Mrs. Saroja, she took up uh, his practices, this uh, mulching systems of permaculture methods, and uh, she has won the Magila Kisan uh, nomination for doing several works. So we visited the field, we found a very good productivity, uh, no chemical, no pesticide, no fertilizers, no weedicides, excellent. Anybody can visit, such a nice uh, uh, models are available. So this can reduce the chemicals. Also production methods using reduced hard power needs, then uh, reduce the use of oil. Sustainable agriculture, in general, we speak uh, in a holistic way. In sustainable agriculture, we have different themes. One is uh, sustainable management of natural resources, eco-friendly farming systems, sustainable plant production practices related to crops, agriculture crops, horticulture crops. And another is sustainable animal production system. This is the uh, animal site and the institutional developments to develop these uh, sustainable agriculture practices in a strong way. Finally, the economic, social, and political context. So there are many types of sustainable agriculture, like organic agriculture, alternate agriculture, green agriculture, evergreen agriculture, agroecological intensification, a greener agriculture, need sensitive agriculture, like smart, climate smart agriculture, low carbon agriculture, all things what focus, use of natural inputs, on-farm inputs, uh, climate, which is respect to change in climate. Accordingly, we have to grow crops. So there are many aspects, industrial revolution from Europe and USA, they develop many machinery, farm machineries, chemicals, pesticides. They initially started this before 60s. Then Green Revolution. This is the term coined by William Gore. 
1968. This, because of the Bengal famine in 1943-44 in, in our country, our first Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru declared that everything can wait but not agriculture. And third green revolution is the gene revolution and biotechnology. Here, the improved varieties of crop plants, animals, and other things, the genes are taken and they developed into uh, different, uh, multiplied in a large scale in the laboratory and the supply to the farmers through biotechnology. And they use the seeds, stem cells, leaf cells, etc. They, they also develop genetically modified crops to our potato, rice, etc. Ever green revolution and ever green agriculture, they focused on the eco, eco technologies, bio village. And in the bio village, in the village, using the information technology and village knowledge centers, they concentrate on use of the on farm resources and they, even the animal dung used for the global gas which is the main uh, climate damaging uh, gas, but it is not damaging in using the burning the gobar gas. It is used for cooking gas in the rural area. Thus, it saves the uh, emission of green gas is used in useful purpose. Another concept, Paulson, North Paulson and Paulson developed a low carbon technology. This is not related to climate change. So what they predict that we want to reduce the carbon intensity, thereby we reduce the temperature two degree by 2020. Now we go for a sustainable plant protection. Why we select this, go for this? We should not uh, generally speak of uh, animal husbandry, grow forestry, many, many other technologies we should not go. In, if you want to select one technology, you should go in depth to apply maximum possible technologies, available technologies that should be transferred to farmers so that he, he can exploit maximum output. When it's going for selection of size, species, and variety, we have to select each, if you suppose we select a block soil or red soil or alluvial soil, select crop according to soil. Another thing is soil management practices. So we, this is uh, covered earlier, we saw cover compost, reduce tillage, conservation tillage, and also cover crops, etc. I would like to thank all our speakers, all our well-wishers, participants, beneficiaries, to uh, be thank you for giving your time. And I'm, on the eve of Independence Day, I would all wish you all a happy and a prosperous Independence Day. Let us keep our prayers with those of people who are affected due to the COVID, the floods, the rains, and uh, the poor, the vulnerable. Let us keep this in mind. Let us strive forward. And we can. the only way to grow is collectively. So on, on behalf of Vishwaiva Kendra and Gramyam, we thank you all. And we also thank the management of Vishwaiva Kendra and the Gramyam management I think without their help, this program would have not been possible. Thank you. Jai Hind. Thanks for watching. For more updates, please subscribe to our official YouTube channel and follow us here.